Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny. Do I even ride Roadblock? And you all know my no. co host, Justin. My favorite number is 49 <laughs> Bird and Uncle. <laughs> I'm into role-playing, Ken. <laughs> this episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley-related. On today's episode, we are talking about the experience that the two better-looking hosts had at the 2019 Lone Star Rally. <laughs> What's up, fuckfaces? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so just so the, the listeners know, uh, Roblox has a bad tendency of putting off making show notes until like four hours before we record. So we made a deal that every time that we have to make the show notes, he has to read whatever we put on the intro. So these are just progressively going to get better. Yeah. <laughs> also, the uh, I meant a role playing Ken. I mean, that's just a generalization of him, but there's also a story attached to that that we'll talk about later because it literally had me in tears just about as much as your iPhone unlocking incidents in Arkansas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Just about. <laughs> God, it feels like it's been forever since I've seen you guys. Well, it has. That's yeah. what happens when you don't ride. Yeah. You know, you guys give me so much <laughs> grief about my tax bracket. <laughs> <laughs> that shit comes at a price. <laughs> yep, you'll cover it. <laughs> yeah, you have the money to fix that, though. <laughs> uh, so. <Yeah>, anyways. <laughs> So, the Lone Star Rally. Yeah, so what is the Lone Star Rally? So I tried to do some research on this. I couldn't find a goddamn there, thing. There's, there's no, no history there's on no history it. There's no history on it that no, I could find either. No. Has it's, it been going on for as long as you've been around, Gramps? Since I've been a biker, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. at least 47 years. Uh, yeah, it's a annual rally held in Galveston, Texas, which is just east of Houston, the Houston area. And uh, they, I want to say that Rot still claims to be the largest, but from what I heard, this one is bigger. Yeah. So this year, between 400 and 425,000 people attended. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. That, yeah. And over 150,000 motorcycles. We were talking about that while we were at the rally, like an estimated guess of how many bikes were there. And I... I think I guessed around 100,000. That's a lot. It's so many. <laughs> of all kinds, too. All kinds. All kinds. It has an economic impact of $115 million. Now, for people who don't know this, Galveston is tiny. It's very small. It's an island. Yeah. Very small island. So $115 million. I wonder how many months worth of their gross revenue that that accounts for. I'm not sure, but I did see something along the lines of that 115 million. I believe it said 70% of it is directly put into some sort of local thing. So whether that be restaurants or hotels. Okay. Um, and then the rest going to uh, vendors, uh, event organizers, things like that. But more importantly, those people pay taxes to Correct. the state. So that's cool. Okay. 50,000. Yeah. Galveston population 50,000 population is 50,000 holy yeah. crap so eight times yeah. the population <laughs> just shows up <laughs> Jesus. yeah yeah so how bad was the causeway to get over from Houston down there zero traffic no it wouldn't really? bad at all I mean I mean was, of course we were coming over at when did we get there it's like three thirty ish on Friday so and we early. probably missed quite a bit of it that's what everyone said they said the causeway is always terrible just stupid pack yeah. yeah it's like trying to get over to south padre island during spring break it's just you know yeah. it takes you an hour and a half to cross the bridge it wasn't bad no we we didn't even Go, slow down coming or going it wasn't, wasn't bad. no of course we left at like seven o'clock in the morning True. but <laughs> we'll get to that later so they um, had performances from charlie daniels band I, i've never heard of him what, or maybe i have and just fuck? didn't know god you and your <laughs> fucking burnt fucking bagels and you don't know who charlie <laughs> daniels is no Jesus no clue is that country Christ. music Oof. I'm going to let you handle this one, Ken, because I feel like I'm not in the right generation to be arguing that fight. <laughs> Pretty sure my fucking heart is beating faster. <laughs> There's pills for that. Uh, 53 people were arrested during the rally. So on that, this is completely hearsay. I did not witness it at all. I got told by a couple people, uh, one of the people at our hotel right after it happened, 
apparently right after we left one of the areas of the strand there was like an fbi state trooper texas marshal raid and they had like 15 to 20 banditos handcuffed like i said completely hearsay i have no idea if that's true or not but that'd be funny if half of those were from that one bust (laughs) god 104 traffic stops so on this number this is from galveston pd they did not um say if that was all bikes or not i never saw a bike pulled over Mm. the entire time i was there i think i saw one car pulled over so i don't know where those traffic stops were happening or what that was but can i get that revenue yeah somehow 23 major accidents seven people taken to the hospital and two fatalities so so it's like major accidents in the air force what we would consider a major accident if there's any injury or if the vehicles were immobilized. I think that's how they classified it as well because on the website I got these numbers from, it had another number in like, I want to say the mid 50s that were just accidents. Fender so they, benders. They did have them, you know, separated. And it did say that those two fatalities both were wearing helmets. Well, that's good. Which was strange. So, so weird thing is your parents are wearing helmets now. Yeah, I think I finally. Uh, and they're moving sh- and they're looking into yeah. full face helmets. They're looking to get full face helmets next year. So I think I finally shamed them enough. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so 23 major accidents, seven hospital visits, two fatalities. That's like an hour in Houston. Yeah. Right? Just yeah. a normal one hour, just not rush hour, just any non-major hour. That's that's just normal. Yeah, okay. I did the math, and with the amount of people that were there, it was like point zero 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 four percent So it was like four to the negative sixth power <laughs> something like that it was something super small <laughs> all right so let's talk about y'all's experience here uh what happened friday let's let's go let's do the the run through the, the run days. through so friday we left uh when did we get on the road yeah, 7 30 no friday going did there. we leave that late yeah because oh, it was supposed to be cold that's as right. fuck that morning. We and pushed well, it, it was. back. Yeah. We had said we were going to leave at 10. Yeah. And the hope said it would warm be up. warmer. Nope. It was 34 degrees when we left. <laughs> yeah. 34, 36, some shit like that. It yeah. was pretty fucking cold. We yeah. did find out something, though, or I found out something. So I have those heat warmer hot hands, mm-hmm. the, the packets. They get really hot. Yeah. <laughs> really fucking hot. Really fucking hot. So I put them inside my gauntlet gloves on like the back side of my hands and actually burnt my knuckle yeah <laughs> by the nice. end of it like it was nice and you know red and and raw and it fucking hurt like a bitch but uh my hand stayed pretty pretty warm <laughs> yeah once yeah once once i got those in it wasn't too no, terrible no not at all uh alicia got to experience a cold ride for the first time yeah so an actual fun. cold ride an actual cold, a very cold <laughs> ride <laughs> so 34 degrees going 70 miles an hour you're in the 85 85 90 (laughs) so you're in the negatives well maybe a little bit of close to zero yeah i mean it was with the wind chill factor that's insane all i had on i had riding shoes those harley riding shoes which is funny because we found out something with those shoes his are not insulated mine are yeah, because mine's just like straight leather. Yeah, mm. my feet were fine. So I, I never wearing, had an issue. I was wearing those. I had my Under Armour long john pants. Mm-hmm. I wore my chap with just a regular pair of jeans. My chaps with the uh, the liners. Were they ashless chaps? Yeah, most of them are. And uh, <laughs> always got to do it. Huh? My jacket with the liner. I was wearing my flannel and my winter gloves. And you froze. Yeah, it was still. I yeah. mean, my it, hands and my feet were cold. Yeah. At that point, it doesn't really matter how much shit you put on unless you're maybe with a the electric heated yeah. gear. That would solve some of it. But that cold is just fuck you cold. Yeah. Oh, if you don't close your air vents in your jacket, it's colder. <laughs> <laughs> we get to Lulu and he goes, do I have like like is there like a zipper back there i was like yeah there's one here there's one here there's one here there's one i don't really manage to close like two of them (laughs) you close like two out of six (laughs) wow and it's funny because i had my um first mfg jacket on and that's the first time i've worn that in pretty cold weather i found out that the back is actually the weak spot 
Like up front in my arms, I was fine, but I don't know what was going on in the back. I also think it might have to do with Elise being back there because it was forcing all that wind right in there between me and her. Mm -hmm. Swooping up her thighs. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking that might have, <laughs> well, that might have uh, caused it to be colder, but my back was my coldest spot. Mm. Like even with my hands and everything, it was fine. So last week when I was talking with Ryan about it, because he's a motor cop. Yeah in oregon fuck that yeah and he Hard said no. his heated grips and a heated vest liner yep. is all he needs and with layering correct yeah. but that's all he needs to stay warm enough to yep. ride in those 30 degree temperatures i was thinking to myself if i had a heated vest i could have rode all day that was the only thing i was missing was something in my torso area to kind of to warm up those hot hands in the gloves were granted they did get too hot at some point yeah <laughs> so i could see the heated grips being uh, that was more mostly when we just stopped when, when we were riding the, the yeah they the were hot fine hands weren't bad but as when you stopped and then put them back on yeah. after you put them back on they were they were quite hot uh but the good news is it did warm up to about 60 by the time we actually got to the island uh we went through houston oh, fucking <laughs> god damn houston and uh, I saw a tollway. I'm like, it's just us two. We got our tour packs on. Let's just fucking go for it. We can blow the tolls. Well, we get on the toll road. We find out that it's not Texas tag. Nope. They use the RFID chips. I was like, fuck, we got to stop. So we pull over. This is funny. I don't know if you noticed this in the video, but we pulled off into the, the area where you pay. And there's like, I want to say like eight lanes, but the signs are so fucking tiny. I can't really read them. I see what I think says exact change. Yeah. And then there's a change made and change made and something else. By the time I see change made, I'm like, oh, shit, we need to be in that lane. I'm like. It was like a mile of fucking cars. Maybe 10, 20 cars deep. So oh, I'm like, shit. fuck, I'm not going to just, you know, weave in there. So I'm like, fuck it. We'll just, I've got some singles. We'll just, you know, it's $1.75. I'll, I'll donate a 25 cents to the state. Yep. So we get up there. And as we get closer. Because the sign only said exact change only it did not does it not it does not that's why when i was going back in the video it says exact coins i was does like it how did really we, say how exact did coins? See exact change on all six signs <laughs> I'd have, I'd have, i would have bet money it yep. said exact exact change exact change well anyways you can see where this is going now we pull up and uh there's it's only coins it's just one of those big giant metal basket things like, where like you, you like you see in a movie yeah you just know toss throw, coins in, throw your money in, coins and in and go <laughs> so we're now pulled up to a closed gate no with, attendant i'm guessing no nope. oh, no 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 it's just a machine <laughs> yep, just a machine <laughs> and we're just sitting there and i'm like well <laughs> fucking now what do we do <laughs> all three of us like what the fuck do we do <laughs> like i'm not gonna back up back the access road to go get in the back of that line so um i just run it <laughs> just drove around it just drove around there's like six feet oh like you could almost fit like a small car that's yeah. how that's how much the bar, it yeah the bar was down but there was like six feet so i go around it i'm like fuck it because i printed to hit the receipt to show that i didn't pay it that way i like if i did get pulled over and be like hey i tried to pay this i can pay you now <laughs> i have money <laughs> i have cash i have credit cards but fucking quarters. shortly after he's like there's a cop right there I'm just gonna go pull over and talk to this cop and I'm already pretty much getting on the on-ramp at this time so I'll let Ken tell tell his part of the story so yeah so he t it, we go around he goes around it and of course we're like what the fuck do we do like okay so we go around it and I see the cop there it was in an unmarked car but it's clearly a cop car mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I was like I'm gonna pull over because I'm not looking to get fucking pulled over and arrested and fined or whatever over a dollar seventy five all right. You know, I don't want to get a fucking $200 ticket for a dollar seventy five. So I'll pull over, pull up behind him. And before I even get off, he gets out and he's walking back. And he's like, he gives me the thumbs up. He's like, you OK? I was like, we were in that fucking line over there and we didn't have change. So we just kind of went around it. And he was like, OK, cool. <laughs> I was like, do, I, do you want me to go in here and pay? And he's like, no, you're good. He's like. You'll get you'll get uh, something in the mail, you know. You'll you'll get your bill in the mail for it. I was like, that's not how that works. <laughs> okay. I was like, we were in the coins only lane. He was like, how'd you get a how'd you how'd you get through it? I was like, I just drove around the bar. <laughs> he was like, okay. Yeah, he had no idea that was even possible. <laughs> he gave zero fucks. Like, well, so here's the thing: the the tollways in Texas are. 
technically private roads, which is why in Texas, at least, only state troopers can pull you over. But on. he was a constable. Well, oh, maybe the county gets extension, but I know I city know. cops don't he, have jurisdiction on the tollways. He gave zero fucks. <laughs> but, like, you can't pay him because it's not state. It's a private corporation that I mean, runs all that. Well, there's a whole facility yeah. attached to it right there. I was like, I can go in there and pay. I'll pay for both of us. I don't care. <laughs> it's like, I'm not trying to get a you know, $200 fine or arrested over $1.75. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't give a single fuck. He was like, yeah, just when you get to the next one, you're going to hit about three more. Make sure you're in the far right lane. There's a cashier there. So okay. it's funny because as this is happening, I'm going down. I, I'm still going down the, the tollway, but I'm going to pull off so I can wait for him. So I pull up on the first uh, exit ramp, but I notice it. It was like a quarter mile away. Yeah, it was not far at all. So I pull off and I see a, a attendant booth for the on ramp. I'm like, oh, sweet. I'll just go up and, and pay it there. So I pull up and it's this older black lady. I pull up really nice, and I, I had my receipt. I was like, hey, I wasn't able to pay this back there. Can I pay? And before I could even say, can I pay you, she's just like, no. <laughs> just no. Nope. She, she's like, no, nah, you can only pay for this one. I was like, so I'm just, you know, should I luck? She's like, you can only pay for this one. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I just paid for that one, and we got on, and it ended up just working out. I was getting on as soon as Kim was pulling up behind me. And then we did that four more times. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. to that extent, but we had to stop, I think, three or four more times to pay. No, the, the rest of them weren't even busy. No, not at all. Just that first one had that huge-ass long line 17 for the cashier. 17 cars, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, one lane for one cashier. It was fucking stupid. And this was on I-10? It's on the Katy Tollway that I think it's Loop 610 mm. that goes around it. Is it the big loop or small loop? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, it was apparently the fastest route according to my google but you still haven't fixed that whole no no, no. i turned it back on because i'm like it's just gonna be me and ken we can take tollways yeah i'll, I'll, I'll pay a toll and mm-hmm. i know on on some of them depending on the day or whatever the motorcycles are free in houston in the monday, hov monday through friday yeah. in the hov lanes yeah motorcycles are free yeah so i was hoping we'd hit something like that but nope. no we weren't that lucky <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not much else happened that Friday. Uh, we made it to the resort area that we were staying at. We had to wait for my parents because they had gone downtown while they were waiting for us. And then we texted them when we were, I think, 45 minutes out. And they still didn't have time to get back because of all the, the rally traffic they had to get through. Uh, went to this little pizza place. Mario's. Mario's. Their sign says, uh, we don't speak much English, but we make good pizza. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Like it was actually on the building, like an on actual the building, sign. Yeah. <laughs> Truth and advertising. I mean, hey. Yeah, I love that. I, I feel like I was ripped off though, because everyone in there spoke perfect English. Very well. Yes. I was like, I feel maybe, chipped. Maybe, maybe Mario's in the owner. back. Yeah, maybe Mario in the back. He can't fucking speak yeah, English. Yeah, maybe. But, anyways, uh, ate some pizza. Went next door to the uh, Indian-owned liquor store. Yeah. That guy was super cool. Yeah. Uh, when you say Indian. Like uh, Native American? No, Slurpee Indian. Dot Indian. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we drank some of the whiskey that we bought, and then we went to bed. Yeah. <laughs> we did not. Did Everyone shit was that day. so fucking done by the time that we were done with dinner. We were just we were just beat. So, so went home. About how how many hours did it take for y'all to go from San Antonio to Galveston? I'd say four. I would say well, five, five with the stops. We stopped and. Actually sat down and ate lunch. Yeah. Okay. Stopped at Chick Fil A. Yeah. Had to hit the Bucky's on the way down. Yeah. Of course. We didn't spend a whole lot of time there. No. So I yeah. think because it's funny when you're. That was one thing. I'll, I'll I'll get to it at the end of the the episode here. But that was one thing that I noticed when it's a bike only trip. When you're buying stuff at a gas station, you have to be mindful of okay, what can I buy right now? Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> not taking it with me. Yeah. Not. And I all I caught myself twice because there was times I can't remember where we were, but I was like, I really want a Red Bull, and I got a Red Bull. And I was about to crack it open. I was like, Oh wait, I need to go home first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to make it to where I'm going to be before I can open this because I can't close it. So oh, that was fun. We want to talk about the Trailer Queens. Oh yeah, it was at Bucky's. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the one time that we really missed you. Yeah, there's like forty something trailers. Yeah. Yeah, bikes being towed. The amount. On. Oh my god, so many bikes, so many bikes from just regular stock bikes to like full on custom 
big from the ground baggers. up. Big wheel baggers, you know. Being towed on the kickstand. On the fucking kickstands. They were Custom so- bikes. Like, I'm talking 50,000 plus invested in these bikes on a motorcycle trailer. So it has with, a wheel with chalk. With a wheel chalk. <laughs> and they're fucking leaned over on the kickstand. And they got like half ass pulled into that wheel chalk and then thrown on the kickstand. I, I, I hope, I hope to God that we are the dumbasses here. That there's something that they're doing on purpose to do that because of the wheel or something getting scratched or something. And it's not just that there's that many stupid people out there. Yeah. I know I'm hoping for for something, you know, great here, but. I doubt it. I've never seen a motorcycle, like, towed on the kickstand. I've never even thought about doing that. That it was a thing? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I've always been told you should have the kickstand down. Yeah, in case it goes over. In case it goes over. On that one side. But I've always heard never don't do that because you have more of a chance of breaking the kickstand off and then you're fucked. I mean, not not likely. I mean, they can take a lot of weight. But but no, I've never, ever, ever seen... It's Anywhere. not. It's not supposed to be ratcheted down to where the kickstand no. has any, any uh, real contact with the trailer. Oh no! They. they I mean, yeah, these they, were leaned over. They, they, they pulled, were full they on up, leaned over. Threw their kickstand down, leaned the bike over to park it, and then ratchet strapped it down. There's even one I got on video. It was a brand new uh, Street Glide Special that had the entire fork over, probably locked. Yeah, fork over locked on the kickstand. It was tied down with the bars all the way locked. <laughs> Brand new bike, still paper plates on it. Yeah, uh, he's probably a retard. I think a lot of people were retards. I mean, if he bought a street glide, oh, shots fired, shark <laughs> nation. All right, let's talk I'm about Saturday. So Saturday was fun. Yeah, Saturday was a fun day. <laughs> I'd ne- first of all, I'd never been. Same with Justin, never actually been to a rally. Like we mm-hmm. went to Rot last year, but we didn't go to Rot. Right, we yeah. hung out in the city of in Austin. Yeah, yeah. not at the rally itself. So uh, I don't want to say his name, but the HD representative that we met in Paris, he texted me. I want to say two or three weeks ago, and he said, uh, "Hey, are you going to be at the Lone Star Rally?" And I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "We're going to have live wires there to test ride." I was like, "Dope, sign me up." He goes, "Just be sure to get there early because that's when they have the most availability." I took that as okay, we need to get there early so we can, you know, get registered and get on this test ride. And hopefully, you know, there's not an overflow from the day before and yeah. first come, first serve nonsense. No, we pull up to, so we pull up to the, the parking lot. So they have like the, the test ride area and they have a separate parking lot for all the bikes and even vehicles and stuff like that. So we pull in because we're all on bikes. And then my uh, nephew's trying to get in, uh, in his truck. And my brother-in-law goes over and he goes, uh, Oh, God. Sorry. He goes, uh, hey, uh, we're shooting a, a video. Can we get this this truck? And he goes, oh, you must be Justin. He goes, no, that's that's my brother over there. That's Justin. So he had made calls to those people to expect us. So when we get there, we pretty much get special treatment. Nice. Free, free parking. fucking awesome. We got free parking. Uh, we pulled up. And, of course, we had to sign all the waivers and everything like that. But after that we got a extended probably 30 to 45 minute yeah. private test ride so it nice. wasn't like a typical you know demo truck where you fucking circle the block twice no we went we pretty much got every type of riding you could on the island yeah it was perfect we didn't get any twisties but you're on an island in texas you're not gonna yeah. get twisties <laughs> yeah but we got highway riding we got stoplight to stoplight we even got to sit in some traffic when we we're over there by the uh the, the cruise ship, ship cruise thing so Let's uh, let's talk about the live wire because yeah. I feel like we've shit all over it so much that uh, now we can really shit all over it. <laughs> Not one bit. No. Okay. <laughs> the okay. only thing the only thing that I'm still shitting on is the price. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's always going to happen for pretty much any Harley Davidson. So. Yeah. So the feel of the bike, uh, it's definitely not a cruiser by any means. Mm-hmm. Uh, the closest thing I can compare it to as far as the rider triangle goes is the FTR 1200. I'd say, v- it, was, I'd say it was a little more comfortable than that one even. More sport cruiser. Yeah, I could I could kind of see that. I, I, I don't think that either of them are in the sport cruiser category, but they both have their pros and cons yeah. as far as the rider triangle. Like I like the the foot position on the FTR better, but I like the handlebar position on the live wire better. 
So it's kind of like a hybrid between maybe a sport cruiser and a sport touring? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would say that. I, I would say that, it's yeah. closer to a, to a sport bike than it is a cruiser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the weight. So it comes in, I think he said 550, 550, 550 pounds. But one thing that he uh, pointed out to us is that with internal combustion motors, you've got, you know, the air cleaner, you've got, you know, the ignition module, everything kind of hanging off the bike that are all different weights. And he said that this might not seem like a lot, but if you take a pendulum and you point, you, you put point zero zero one pounds more on this side, that is now unbalanced. And it's going to, it's going to tip that way. With this being an electric bike, it's all, you know, compartmentalized. It is a hundred percent fifty fifty balanced. Nice. It's amazing. Which you wouldn't think is is a big deal. But so take for example, like when you do the slow bike competitions, that live wire would destroy everything. Everybody. We could we even tested out when we were in the the stop and go traffic. Two miles an hour with one hand is what you could do on that bike. Yes. <laughs> See, even he's making the face like yeah. he doesn't fucking believe it. <sighs> Two miles an Two hour with miles one an hour. hand. And that was in sport mode. Imagine if we to put it in like eco mode. I, I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah, it was so it was awesome. Speaking of the modes, uh, that was actually one thing that we got to play around with. Super easy to change the modes. It's it's one button. It changes yep. on the fly. You don't have to be stopped or anything. It's got highway, sport, rain, eco, and then it's got three that you can program yourself yep. mm-hmm. so what you can program is throttle yep which is like the progressivity of the throttle power how much of the actual battery is giving power regen which is how much power is going back in the batteries which affects basically the engine braking i'm using air quotes because it's not really an engine and then uh traction control how how sensitive the traction control is in sport mode that thing sucks your eyeballs to the back of your skull. Fuck yeah, it does. I'm not talking about it's Harley quick. I'm talking about it is sport bike quick. Yes. It is. And it's it's instantaneous. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like, you know, that sweet spot in the RPM range. It's like being there all the time. <laughs> yeah. It is absolutely amazing. And the throttle, like that's one thing I was really worried about with the electric bikes is I feel like the throttle wasn't going to feel natural. It felt super natural, Just, super smooth. When you asked for power, it gave it to you exactly how you wanted it. That's what she said. <laughs> I mean, okay, so go over the regen, the engine braking. So, this is actually one really important piece because one of the things that um, the guys there were talking about is that there's no, there's, I mean, we've talked about it on previous episodes too, there's no one standard definition on range mm-hmm. for electric vehicles, all electric vehicles, not just motorcycles. He said that there's been multiple times where he's left the house at 70 miles range, gone for like a 30 minute ride, come back and had 90 miles range because it has generated more power than has put out. So you're going down a lot of big hills or if you're just you know cruising along in traffic not really pulling a lot of energy out of the battery but putting a lot in i will say though that the engine braking quote air quotes in here uh, the region it's it's noticeable for sure especially in sport mode especially in sport mode so so they have this the the region is on almost all electric vehicle Mm -hmm. so when you're braking it uses this the the spinning of the in what is the axle at that the axle at that point that you're not sending power to the axle since it's still spinning it is being used as a generator Mm -hmm. so yeah in sport mode when you would let off the throttle it was very noticeable that it was just like your engine engine braking is what it feels like just like you downshifted and but heavily yeah like have a like second or first gear um but to that point uh this bike does have the rds that the the new 2020 line's getting and I don't know if it does this on the new, like the 2020 touring lines, but on this specific bike, when you go into that regen period, when it feels the bike slowing down, it automatically triggers the brake light, which is super cool, which is needed greatly on this bike because yeah. you're doing it so often. I, I would like to see that as an option um, in the touring bikes, but uh, you definitely feel it. Um, you honestly, you, you mentioned sport mode. I played around in eco mode for a little bit, and you feel it even more in eco mode because it's really? trying to really kick it really up, really get as much power back. But to that point, 
eco mode is no fucking slouch. <laughs> I put it in eco mode and I was punching it. It could still beat most internal combustion bikes out there. Yeah, it, it was, even in eco mode, it was nothing to get that front wheel up. Now it had they would they made sure that we left traction control on, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, even in, even with traction control on, your front wheel will come up. Now yeah. it feels it and it'll put you back down very quickly. <laughs> but it'll fucking throw your ass into the back of that seat and fucking yep. move. And it was amazing. Like I had a shitty shitty grin the whole fucking time. Yep, that's. Okay, so I I don't think I've gotten your opinion on this, so I'm curious. What did you think about the noise? I didn't like it. Oh, really? I, I feel mean, like I'm the only person in the world that loves that noise. Uh, it just it just I guess it's just an electric motor to me. Yeah. I, I don't feel like it stood out. I mean, I, I don't want to say that I didn't like it. It's just okay, neither here nor there for me. Yeah. I really liked it. I, I think it, it ties back to my whole, you know, I, I love sci-fi and all that kind of shit. And it, it sounds like a Judson's car. Like, yeah. it really does. Like, it just, <laughs> <and you just, laughs> it, the faster you go, the higher it gets. And it almost feels like you're riding on a jet engine because you just I hear mean, it. And that that was nice that, you know, as you do, as your as your speed does increase or you do slow down, you have that, that audible, yeah yeah you know, feedback. notification, feedback. Here we mm-hmm. go. Thank you. Uh, so, you know. So, I mean, that was kind of cool. I mean, but eh. The no clutch was definitely. That was kind of weird at first. <laughs> definitely <laughs> weird at first. No shifting was kind of weird at first. So the first thing that they do after you register and they get your license stuff, they put you on the uh, the stationary demo bike. The kickstart. The kickstart. There yeah. we go. Just so you you know, they teach you how to start it. Like you, you actually have <laughs> to turn it on and then wait for the screen and it'll give you a start and you have to hold, press and hold the start button just like on a regular bike just like a regular bike and then everything lights up <laughs> but the, the first thing I did get on hit the start button and reach for that reach clutch reach for that clutch yeah I did the exact same thing dude <laughs> I was like that's weird yep but by the end of it like especially like when we were sitting in traffic I was like I never realized how much of a hassle it is to shift <laughs> Yeah. Like, we're just sitting there traffic, just Just, fucking cruising. No heat below you. Oh, yeah. That was one thing I asked him when we got done. I was like, does this thing generate any heat? There's none. He he goes over, he goes, no. And, like, the bikes we were just riding for, like, 45 minutes, he just goes and touches touches every single part of it. He said nothing generates heat. He's like, the only heat you're going to get is from the sun on the road. Yep. Nice. (laughs) Okay, so (laughs) you both had a chance to take it out. 45 minute ride yep. and most of the conditions that i think people who get a live wire or any electric motorcycle is going to really face we talk about it thirty thousand dollars is it worth the price justin no okay i think i i still stand by my statement that we said earlier i well now i can at least say that this is a premium product it's not like you know you get this this harley you know foreshadowing of they they charge twice the price and you get half the quality type type thing that's not the case here they're of course charging twice the price but i think they are on par with the competition now granted i haven't gotten to ride the competition but i can't it left nothing to be desired yeah i mean i came besides in, you know range of course. i came in with very low expectations mm-hmm. very low expectations i told justin that too and it blew them all out of the water. It was great. It was it was fun. It was easy to handle. It just everything about it was it was it was premium. It was yeah. great. There was I had no problems with anything. They look really good in person. Yeah. Oh yeah, really good. Would I buy one? No, there's there's still about ten thousand too much. At least ten thousand too much. Yep. But one of the cool things about it is all the panels on it. Like if mm-hmm. you buy the the green one or whatever color that was, those the the two side panels and the headlight cover. The yeah, the, the fair front fairing. Yeah, uh, you could if you wanted black ones, you can just buy the black ones and put it on there, or the orange ones, or you can just take them off and paint. Like everything can come off. The the motor is the chassis, so all those aluminum or metal siding you see, if you go down that bike, all that stuff unbolts. Yeah, it's just like a crash ones. guard is all it really is. But hmm. and it's actual metal though. Yeah, it's it's actual metal. And when I saw that I was like, so you mean I can take it off and powder coat it? <laughs> My yeah. mind started going. I was like, no, no, you're not you're not spending $30,000 on this bike. But going back to my point, I think that 
it's just you know reaffirmed my guesstimate is that they're putting this out in the market to try to recuperate that 10 years of r d they're getting a lot of positive feedback from everyone i've seen that reviews it they absolutely love it and i think as that market catches on just like we see with any technology tv cell phones everything's going to get cheaper yeah yeah and if if they start bringing out like I, i i really would not be shocked if five years from now they're offering the same bike at half the cost or at least something very similar yeah. at half the cost. And I would I would spend 15 grand on that. It's that fun. Yeah, if the price was right, I would get one. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I much mean, fun. Then the power's there. Uh, you know, for home charging, what do you say, from, from pretty much zero uh, all the way up to 100% at home mm-hmm. with your level two charger is that what it, level one level one or two I level one whatever the home charger is yeah. the, 100, your, the 110 volt yeah just yeah. your regular wall outlet 11 hours to 100 mm-hmm. percent uh for the level three chargers the superchargers that are at the dealerships mm-hmm. or the gm it was it was the gm ones i think so because not the tesla not the ones. tesla ones yeah. not the tesla ones 45 minutes 45 minutes for 75 percent right yeah uh 75, 80, something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And then I think it was an extra maybe 30 minutes to full or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So hour, hour and 15 for a full charge at a level three charger. Which I'm curious because a guy is going off, eh, not super off topic. They just got a patent for a new type of lithium ion. It's like lithium ion carbonate or something like that to where they think they have solved the charging time issue that basically they found some sort of i don't know chemistry or something like that to where if they heat the battery up it actually charges i think 100 percent in 10 minutes and it actually extends the longevity of it Hmm. so usually it's funny because heat is usually a bad thing when you're talking about batteries but with this new type of battery if you heat it up, like basically warm it up, preheat it, you're able to charge it faster and actually extend the battery life. So, so I know we talk about the thirty thousand dollars. What type of maintenance has to be done on these bikes? Oh, we actually oh, asked that. Yeah. So that was one thing I asked him. Like, okay, mm-hmm. you asked him. I did ask him. I know. <laughs> I was like, we asked him that. He's like, that's one thing I asked. <laughs> I specifically asked. Okay, you ladies, it was ladies. ladies. But it yes, was we were there. Okay. <laughs> we both wanted to know. Uh, and uh, almost nothing. I mean, check the tires. Tires, belt, belt brakes. And the brake fluid, you know, brake actual brake pads. Pretty the much ro- your normal rotors. wear items on an internal combustion motor. But there's, there's no fluids. There's no oil. I mean, so I'm sure they check the battery, you know. Um, yeah, the life of the battery. Some sort of test that, you know. So... I'm just curious if you get, let's just say you get a Road Glide Special. It's twenty seven, twenty eight thousand dollars, and you do twenty thousand miles a year. That's four services, and you're averaging four hundred and fifty dollars a service. Where's your return on investment hmm. when See, you buy the live wire? Now I'm guess you know it's not a true apples to apples, but if you don't have to pay, if you pay a hundred dollars to service a live wire every 10,000 miles and you pay 450 every 5,000 miles where you know it does it become <clears throat> worth it yeah see and I didn't didn't even ask what the uh, service interval yeah was I think I want to say he did say it after you left cuz I remember it was it was odd I want to say he said a thousand for the initial, and I think they have you back at seventy five hundred. I mean, I understand the thousand. They yeah. just they put it together. You know, you come back and that check just makes sense. Torque specs yeah. and everything like that. Yeah, but I mean, like your brake fluid, it's two years. Two years, yeah. It's not you know, even your, a mile thing. Your, your brake pads and rotors. I mean, those you can get at tens of thousands. 10, 000, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd say your tires are going to be your probably the first to go because the belts. 20,000 plus easy so yeah, yeah i would say the tires especially i mean <laughs> i mean <laughs> tires the and way we were riding <laughs> tires <laughs> tires and your you know your brake pads yeah but hmm. but the only thing that that comes up when you mention that is how long would it take to do 
twenty thousand miles right. on a live wire, right? Yeah. hundred and ten miles at a time. So this one, this, so this one guy on Reddit, he has a live wire, and from one percent, he got his battery down to one percent, to one hundred percent charge. It took him thirteen hours, thirty nine minutes, and forty four seconds. Hmm. I mean, but I, that's that's what you get. That's I if mean, you've got it all the way down to one percent. Yeah. And I mean, how how often are you going to be doing that? Like, unless you, unless you're driving sixty miles to work one way. Yeah, because I mean, the the bike that I got on, it wasn't fully charged all the way, mm-mm. but it had a ninety five mile range on it. Is yeah, what it said in sport mode. Yeah, mm. I, I hovered around that same that same area, but I mean, we did probably twenty miles, and I think I only saw like five to ten actually drop on the range, hmm. and I was fucking going for it too oh yeah i was <laughs> so, playing with it hard yeah so i really think that that i think this goes across every company i think those range figures are very conservative because oh yeah it's a lot it's a lot better of a you know a pr thing to claim 120 and actually get 180 than the opposite yeah and it all depends again what mode you're in how you're actually riding it i mean you yeah. could leave it in sport mode and still just kind of tool around on it that's true yeah all right, so after the the live wire ride, what did y'all do? Oh, and we had to go to the Ciro tent. Mm-hmm. So we finished our live wire test ride around 11.30, and we had to be at the Ciro tent at 1, which sounds like plenty of time to get there. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> so we, uh, we go down to the Strand, which is like the main drag of this, this rally. And, I mean, it's just a sea of bikes and people Mm -hmm. as far as you can see all types of different people all types of different bikes costumes oh yeah yeah because this happened the 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 weekend of halloween lack of clothes i I didn't see much of that i didn't see any titties no zero no titties hanging out but definitely saw some cleavages a lot of a lot of a lot of cleavage both Titty cleavage and ass cleavage. I didn't see any ass cleavage. Oh, yeah. The ass hanging out all over the place and all sorts of kinds of ass. <laughs> kinds you wanted to see, kinds you didn't want to see. Yeah. So just to kind of give you an idea of the strand, it is extremely packed. It is extremely loud. And it is full of bagger bros oh. of, of all different types. Oh, yeah. So before we get into the zero thing, can we just, can we just put out a PSA of... Why do people blast their music so fucking loud? Like I get playing music, attention, but blasting attention. it so fucking loud to where it's hurting my ears from fifty feet away. Pay attention to me. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> look, look at, at me. me. But like it, it hurts my head to think that there's that many people like that. <laughs> oh yeah, and we were, we were plenty far away. Yes, and it was you. You. It was like you're being in a club. You actually yeah. had to talk louder to the person that you're standing next to. <laughs> On a public street, yeah. out in the open. And the and bike could be 50 to 100 feet away. Like, I'm talking a good distance away. Like, so far away, you had to be like, who the fuck is playing that music? Like, where is that music coming from? Yeah. But think about it, though. It's coming from a motorcycle. Oh, dude. I mean, I, you know. I, you I, know what's <laughs> funny is I don't know. Glad if, they if, got that money. I don't know if you noticed this, but the worst you would think that the worst offenders would be the big wheel baggers. They got, you know, the speakers and all the lids. It was the fucking road kings. Yeah. They had those they big giant their freaking, marine fucking speakers hanging off the crash guards. Yep. And, and they were bars. so fucking loud. <laughs> I was like, it's now <laughs> granted the, the 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 big wheel baggers had a better sounding yes. system. Like you could actually, you know, hear the bass and the treble, but the road kings were the loudest. Yeah, I saw a couple of those. <laughs> We were right behind one when we were going over to the zero tent, and holy fuck, dude! I was like, I was like trying to hide behind my fairing to get some of the noise because <laughs> I didn't have my helmet on or anything. So I was just, oh man, it was terrible. Uh, All right, so you you were on the strand. You went to the zero tent. No, no. <laughs> okay, we stopped at the strand because we rode over with my dad and my brother. We found a parking spot. It was only then, ten bucks to park on the strand. Yeah, actually mm-hmm. on the strip, which is just downtown. Galveston. Galveston. Yeah. So we parked there. We walked around. We found the Ciro tent. And then they're like, oh, no, we want you to bring the bike over here. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. You walked off. When they when they said that they wanted you to bring your bike, I was like, all I could think was good luck. 
<laughs> yeah. So on the Strand, you know, it's just a two-way street that normally has parallel parking on each side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so they had bikes, you know, you back your bike in, and then you, somebody else would park in front of you. And we'll get to this later. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then they had one lane of traffic in between. So, I mean, it was it was wide enough for everything. But once you parked, if you were backed against the curb, then you were there. You're fucked. And so, so yeah, you walked off, and I was like, yeah, he's going to – they said to be here at 1. And Thankfully, I had parked in front of my dad, I believe. Yeah. So I was like, I know I'm not blocked in because there's no way they're parking three deep there. So I walked back, and it, it did take me a while to get back just because it actually took me a while to cross the street because there were so many bikes coming down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I got I got my bike. I ended up getting my bike right as Adam was passing me. So he's like, yo, where's the tent? I was like, just follow me. So we pulled in, and then the area to get into the tent was just, I mean, a sea of people, which uh, the police siren came in great handy because oh, they man. hear that burp, burp, and it, <laughs> <laughs> it's like being fucking Moses, dude, except on the way out, man. People would not fucking move. But yeah, just burp, burp. <laughs> well, and you were pulling in, and all the, there's vendors on, well, both sides and in the middle. Yeah. And you could get anything and everything done to your bike. It was pretty fucking cool. I mean, you could, if, if you had the time, you could start on one side yeah. and you could get your oil changed, like a, do a full service. You could get your tires changed. You could get your wheels changed. You could get your handlebars stage changed. Stage one. You could you get, yeah, stage one. Pin or stage two. Pin striping. Swap out your fairings. Yep. Stereo uh, installs. Stereos. I'm talking everything. everything. <laughs> Which was pretty cool because usually when we go to events, especially regionally, we see the same four or five booths every time. So being at a big rally where, like you said, there was literally everything that you could ever want was pretty dope. Yeah, like there was one where you could literally swap your inner fairing for a different color. And you gave them your fairing, inner fairing, and you bought your new one and they put it in for you. Yeah, the install was free. And then there was bars. If you bought bars there, the install was free. It was pretty dope. But I told him I saw those guys doing bars. I'm like, man, I feel like if Roblox saw it, he'd get a hard on, man, get paid to put bars on all day. Yeah. Mm. And I saw it. I was like, I wouldn't fucking do that. <laughs> you couldn't pay me enough to do it. And they did that all day long, all right, right there. Day. Just do it. It's funny. When you walked by, all you heard was the like the, the metal like dog tag chains being pulled through. And then <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, but those guys can do a set of bars in half an hour. That's what we oh, were I'm saying. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I was insane. like, they know where every bolt is. They know what every size is. They know what the torque spec is. <laughs> they they probably have tricks that we would never even dream of getting wires through. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we made to the Ciro tent. Uh, got to meet some Ciro representatives. Got to meet a couple fans. Uh, hung out with Adam for a bit. Uh, Uncle Ken got spotted a lot. <laughs> yeah, again, that's that's still kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey, Uncle Ken. Oh, hey, hey. Hey. I don't know you. You said Uncle Ken, so I know I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then we also got to see the new Indian Challenger because mm-hmm. uh, that's what Adam was riding. So he had the Indian Challenger Dark Horse, which uh, looks really good in person. It looks a, it looks a lot better. It looks in person. a lot better in person. It's Way a better. badass bike, uh, but we'll save more for that on next episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you, you got to see the Challenger. We did. I, he wanted me to ride it, and that's what we were supposed to do on Friday. But he didn't get into town till like nine o'clock, and then by the time that we had a chance to ride it on Saturday, he had already disappeared as well. So we just. He he offered it to me, but we were just never able to, to yeah. make it work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we headed out of the rally at like seven thirty, eight, like before anything real popped off. Like it started, it started getting pretty busy, and everyone was like, "Yeah, let's let's get the fuck out of here." But <laughs> well, the cool thing is, oh, go ahead. No, 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 I was gonna say Ken has a story about about how difficult it was to. So leave. I was gonna say, for well, to start with, you don't have to pay to go to this rally. Mm-hmm. That was a big thing. Like I'd gone to their website, and it start anywhere from fifty dollars up to like one hundred and seventy five dollars. Yeah. Well, come to find out that that is just to get you access to different bars and their balconies. Yeah. Oh, and you get a t shirt. So, I guess if we'd have spent like, because it start actually everything really started on Thursday, right? Yes. 
So I mean, if we were if you were going to spend every day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday there, I could see that being beneficial because then you could go up to that bar, get out of the crowd, get out of the crowd, and people watch because you're you're right there on the strand. You can see everything, see everybody, take your food up there, order food, order drinks. It was basically like when we were at Rob, we went upstairs to that restaurant. It's same same basic thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and but but they only allowed people who bought, you know, the wristbands to get up there. So I could see that. But anyway, so now it's time to leave. <laughs> Justin's bike is at the Ciro tent. I'm parked all the way back, back at our strand. original spot, right near and his dad. Yes, correct. Okay. Just a few bikes away. Who's already gone though? And so, of course, we lost them. Everyone was just walking around doing their own thing. And so everyone was left. Justin sent me the address. He's like, we're going here. It's salsa or something. Salsas. It was literally salsas. <laughs> it was good, though. <laughs> and it, yeah, it was good Mexican food. But uh, so I'm like, okay. So I get back to my bike, and then I'm parked against the curb. There's a bike parked in front of me, mm-hmm. and, and then bikes all around. So I look around. I'm like, I thought about for a moment, like, you know, I could ask if this is anybody's bike just in the off chance shit right? in the wind at that point right? <laughs> I was like you know what fuck it well I go up to the bike and it's locked the forks are locked mm-hmm. well shit I want to move this bike one way or another I'm getting out of here of course and there's, there's just an endless stream of bikes still pulling in cruising down yeah. the strand mm-hmm. and so I was like well fuck it so I'll Take, his, take both the helmets off. I set them on the curb, and there's a guy sitting that was sitting there drinking a beer. I was like, hey, man, you ride? He's like, yeah, I ride. I was like, good. I was like, you want to help me? He's like, what do you need? <laughs> Super was, fucking sketchy, right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going to push this bike out of the way. You hop on my bike and pull it to the end of the street right there. He's like, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I pushed the bike out. And mind you, the, the fork's locked, so I can only make a left-hand turn for so far. So you can only NASCAR it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. So I'm, I pull it out. He's walking. He didn't even start my bike. I'd unlocked it, and all, all he had to do was get on it, start it, and pull it around. No, he pushed it <laughs> out of the parking spot, down the street to the, to the end of the street. And I, as he was pushing it, he's pushing hard. I'm like, dude, just start it and go. <laughs> Fucking hurry up is really what I wanted to say. <laughs> but he was being nice and helping me. So he gets past me, and I start to back the bike up. And all of a sudden, I hear someone, what are you doing? And I didn't really pay attention to him. But all of a sudden, there's a person in my way now. It was the owner of the bike. <laughs> He's like, you tried to steal my bike? At this point, I'm pushing it backwards. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to steal it right back into yep. his parking spot, sir. Yeah, and I already took it for a ride, man. It's good. I put gas in it. It's but not no. my style. <laughs> yeah, didn't like the handling. So literally, I'm I'm pushing it back into its parking spot, and this dude is losing his shit. I mean, kind. Of, I mean, I could kind of get it. You know, someone's fucking with your bike. But I'm no, like, no, fuck I just, that. You block someone in. I, I was like, you, I disagree. You, you 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 were blocking me in, so I had to you know move my bike out of the way of course my bike is nowhere near to be seen at this point it's parked down at the end of the street <laughs> so i was like look i was just moving your bike to get my bike out down there and he was like quit fucking with my bike the dude is pissed off and not understanding and, and he could have been drunk for all i know that all i did was move his bike to get my bike out but he was not fucking having it so i fucking threw the kickstand down and fucking walked off i should have just dropped the goddamn bike Dude. and walked off <laughs> that's how i know you're only 90 percent badass <laughs> right because <laughs> 100 percent badass not would have not dropped it he would just push it over <laughs> yeah like all right fuck you then he was, i'm not touching he your was bike anymore. all sorts of fucking indignant i was like <laughs> look around you man there are thousands and thousands of bikes right here People are gonna fucking leave, yeah. you know. So you yeah, don't park a, in front of someone you don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, don't don't lock your fucking bike. It'd have been a whole lot easier <laughs> for me to steal, <laughs> right? <laughs> Fuck. Oh boy. But anyways, after we ate at Salsa's, which was surprisingly good Mexican food, I was shocked at how good it was. We went back to the hotel for another night of drinking and uh, shenanigans and. You know Ken. All of our listeners know Ken. But you also have the pleasure of knowing how my dad is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) My dad is, uh, I wouldn't say he's just as bad as Ken. He's just as bad as Ken, but in his own different way. In an old-timer way. He's the boomer version of Ken. Okay, boomer. Yeah. So 
one thing is they are very uh, quick with their comebacks and their their jabs and their jokes, and <laughs> so so to kind of prep the story, uh, Ken had to sleep on a pull out couch. So mm-hmm. our resort room was basically a, a four bedroom apartment type deal. Yeah, I guess you could call it. So there was a main living area. There was two main living areas, but two we all li- kind of two living areas and three bedrooms. Was it three? Okay, yeah. yeah there's one and then two. Okay, yeah. so it was three like a three bedroom apartment. Well, I had one room, my parents had another room, my brother and sister had the other room. Well, Ken had to sleep on the pull-out couch in the main living area. And when we got there, it was super cold outside, but the apartment was hot as fuck. We could not get it to cool down. Uh, There was, like, the thermostat kept fucking one of those eco bullshit. It kept resetting to where it wanted to be at and just a whole fucking shit show. It was hot for me. When they had the fireplace on, which they thought was just decorative, it was you know, just electric makes fake flames. <laughs> you couldn't feel a lot of heat coming off of no. it. So it's not like we just assumed it was decorative. Like you would go up there and feel it and it's like, yeah, I mean, it's it's warm-ish, but yeah, Ken apparently found out that it was functional. Yeah, 100% functional. <laughs> so he was, you know, uh, trying to remove as much clothing as possible to try to cool down. And apparently one time during the night, my dad walked out and Ken was just on his back with a shirt like up to his titties. <laughs> yeah. So I was wearing my shorts and a shirt. Okay. It was hot. So I had, I literally, I just fucking had pulled my shirt up over my, fu- just all the way up to my neck. <laughs> Didn't have any blankets on me, no sheets on me. Just nothing. laying on top of the mattress. <laughs> okay. Yep. Good times. And my dad walked out and uh, this is, of course, that, uh, the next night, he goes, yeah, man, I, I saw you up there with your, your belly button. I wanted to just, you know, start chipping golf balls into it. And without missing a beat, Ken goes, hey, I'm into role playing. <laughs> Dude, he, <laughs> like laying there with your morning wood. I was like, hey, bring it on. <laughs> yeah, he said, I, I got to look at that in my morning wood. I thought, hmm. <laughs> That's not bad. God, and they just, they were just going back and forth like that, and they everyone was just fucking crying. Super uncomfortable for them. <laughs> well, I don't think so. I think everyone that was there was pretty much used to it. Alicia probably was a little uncomfortable, but she'll get over it. <laughs> okay, so so we had an early night because uh, Sunday, me and Alicia had to wake up really fucking early to get to Austin for the Formula One race by like I think twelve thirty or something along those lines. No, okay, eleven thirty. Uh, so anyway, we were on the road at like seven thirty, seven forty five a.m. Um, it was we, stupid. We rode together most of the way though. Hey, you didn't have to wake up and ride with us. No, we we told you that you're more than welcome to sleep in, but yeah. <laughs> So I have I have no sympathy for him, but uh, anyways, uh, we made it to the F one race about fifteen minutes before the race started. Damn! <laughs> so a little I need to tell a little bit of backstory for the rest of this to make sense. So uh, by the time we bought our tickets, it said that all of the parking lots or all the parking passes were sold out, but there was still parking available in lot Q. I'm thinking Q's a long way down the alphabet. <laughs> So that was the first sign. So we get on and try to buy parking passes for it, and they just said, you, you pay at the gate, basically. I was like, okay. So I put in my GPS, Coda, lot Q, and it picks it up. I'm like, cool, sweet. That, okay, that's cool. Yeah. All their lots are like that. I just had never been to Q before. Mm-hmm. So I was like, cool. So I put in my GPS, and we start going. Um, Your phone's GPS, not Harley's correct. GPS. My okay. phone's it, GPS. Oh, it would have taken longer to do that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I see a sign that says CODA. CODA is Circuit of the Americas. Sorry, I'm using abbreviations. People don't know. Um, Lock Q, and it's got a, an arrow to the right, right when my GPS is telling me to turn right. I'm like, cool. The GPS actually knows where, where it's taking me. And then I make that turn and realize I'm turning into, like, uh, you know, like the neighborhoods that are, like, not ghetto south side, but, like, out towards Hasso south side. Just, like, they've got big, like, two or three acre lots and just kind of run down junky houses. Yeah. That's what I'm in at this point. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, well, something's off. So I'm seeing where it is on the map, and it shows, like, coming to this cul-de-sac and, like, walking, like, I don't know, 200 yards. I was like, well, I'm not doing that. But I get to an area in the cul-de-sac where I can see the actual lot queue. I'm like, okay, how do I get there? 
All right. So I kind of weave my way back to the neighborhood and go back to that main road. And I realize that that sign that's pointing to the right is showing you that Q, lock Q is coming up in like 100 yards to the right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not what my GPS told me to do, but anyways, we pull in and we get stopped right at the gate and the guy's like, hey, do you have your tickets? He asks for tickets. I'm like, I mean, I got on my phone, but I don't have them readily available. He goes, I need to see them before I can let you in. I'm like, why the fuck would I want to just park here and I mean. And go where? This, this is all a shuttle lot. So this is like three miles from the track. So you get on like school buses and, and ride in there. So I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I start getting an attitude with the guy. He's like, you know, whatever, just just park over there. I'm like, I want a motorcycle. It's not like I'm taking up a spot anyway. So I end up parking behind like a generator. Anyways, we we get geared down and everything, and then we walk. So there's a there's a like school buses, and then a lane, and then the street. Well, we're parked like over here, so we just naturally instead of walking through the grass and the rocks and everything, we just walk on the street. Well, we walk up, and there's there's probably like ten buses here. And we walk around the front of the bus and we go to get on and this guy stops us. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where, where are you guys coming from? I was like, what? What? He goes, why are you guys walking from, from that side? Why are you walking from the road? Granted, we're in the middle of fucking nowhere. So it's not like people are just like randomly walking, trying to get a free ride on this bus. I'm like, we just parked at the gate and we walked. He goes, well, what did you, what did you, what did you, uh, you park? what did you park? I was like, I, I was like, lean this way that motorcycle that's mine he goes okay well i just don't want to walk on that side because it's dangerous you cross in front of the bus i was like i crossed one bus and i'm 27 years old i know like we made it (laughs) (laughs) i looked both ways (laughs) it's like we fucking made it like i even because it's ingrained in me from working on the railroad like i always walk like you know 10 15 feet in front of them and then cross so they can they can see you but uh, anyways, we get there like 15 minutes before the fucking race starts. The, the race is awesome, but we uh, the crowd was a sellout crowd. So it was like 250,000 plus people. Damn. So like vendors were running out of food. Uh, restrooms were being, you know, overrun. I'm not going to get into that. But <laughs> after the race ends, we uh, do the whole, you know, trophy, uh, you know, presentation thing. And then we walk back to where we were dropped off from the bus same guy is there <laughs> did he ask you where you were coming from no, this doesn't play into the story as much but it does play a somewhat crucial part so uh we see this line and there's like three lines of about i don't know 20 30 people we're like all right cool it's not that bad so we go to get in the back of the line and one of the other guys not the, the guy we had an issue with earlier he's like hey that's uh those are already been divided are you going to lock q we're like yeah he goes that's that line over there. And this thing's fucking like a quarter mile long. Like not even <laughs> exaggerating. So fucking long. So we walk all the way to the back of it. And we sit in this just incredibly slow moving line. I think it took us about two. No, no, no. It was about an hour and a half before we actually got on a bus. Fuck. Well, at least it wasn't hot. It wasn't hot. So that was. And we had chairs because that's what we took to the race. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't too terrible. I mean, it was an hour and a half of waiting. But anyways, our bus pulls up and we get on and there's a very old, sassy black lady as the driver. And she says that she doesn't want to drive because she's just stuck in traffic. She goes, it took me an hour and a half to make that last run. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? (laughs) (laughs) It took you an hour and a half to go three miles? So anyways, she just walks off the bus and starts walking away. And I'm like, okay. Uh, I guess we're just going to get on the bus now. Well, Like she actually fucking just got up and left? She walked off. We didn't see where she was going. More on that later. So I get on the bus, and there's a guy in a cowboy hat. And you can tell he's he's a little off. And he was already on the bus as it pulled up. So I don't know if he fucking took the whole ride or if she picked him up on the way. I don't know what was happening. Anyways, turns out the driver just took to, went to go take a shit. Fair enough. Came back on the bus. Everyone was already you know on the bus and the uh, guy that we had an issue with earlier he comes on the bus and he looks at the guy in the cowboy hat and he goes why were you uh why were you on the bus when it came up and this guy he says something i mean he's slurring his words and shit he goes doesn't answer the question though he goes yeah but you were you were already on the bus when it pulled up how did you come back from the lot like are you coming from the lot like the race is over there shouldn't be anybody coming back and he you know 
obviously completely misunderstands the question once again and gives a bullshit answer. And then finally, the guy's like, okay, whatever. Like, <laughs> clearly, this guy's not getting it. So, over the course of the next hour that it takes us to make this three miles, Mr. Cowboy Hat is flirting hard with sassy old black lady. Hilarious as fuck. Because, I mean, he he's smooth, man. This guy's got some <laughs> fucking game. He's got some fucking game. So, like, the bus drivers were, like, passing each other. And they'd stop and, like, talk. And after she closes the window, he'd be like, hey, did you tell her how, how good looking I am? Like, I mean, just your <laughs> typical old man smooth pickup lines. Well, we, we, everyone on the bus is kind of hearing this. Like, the first you know third of the bus is you know laughing at this guy and then as we're getting close to a lot it, it starts clicking like oh shit this guy's about to get in his car and drive yeah so we got the bus and i'm watching him because i still i'm still not certain if this guy's drunk or if he he might just you know have some sort of behavioral issue or problem so i was like i'm not going to be the one to judge too quick and i'm watching him walk and he's got pretty much perfect motor skills he's slower but he's an older guy but he's not stumbling he's not tripping he's walking straight so i'm like "Mm, okay i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt here so i pull off into a a porta potty before we go towards the bike and as i finish in the porta potty i'm walking back towards the bike i notice that the line to get out of this parking lot is now backed up like 20 cars deep i'm like what the fuck is going we've got police on the road right up here blocking traffic why is it this backed up this all sounds terrible (laughs) so i i then notice that there is a gap between the road and the parking lot so i you know follow the gap to a parked car that is sitting in its parking spot and then cars are lined up behind it the driver right behind the parked car is Mr. Cowboy Hat. I was like, okay. Wow. <laughs> he's not weird. He's so drunk that he's waiting for a parked car to go. Like, wow. no one in it. It's off. <laughs> wow. So I'm like, I look over at the, the cop car. I'm like, is it like a security? And I see Sheriff. I'm like, oh, no, he's an actual cop. All right. So I go up and I was like, hey, this guy in the White Explorer is dr- very intoxicated. He goes, okay. <laughs> so he walks over and by that point he had, he had pulled around the parked car and was just about to get on the road. And he flagged him down, tapped on the window and had him roll down his window. And I just went back to my bike. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking get involved with this. <laughs> sure enough, man, he pulls him out of the car, backs his car up so everyone else can get out and starts doing a field sobriety test. And by the time we left... He was in handcuffs. Bam. <laughs> he was fucking parked behind, waiting behind a parked car. Yep. That's great. I, I You know, I, I'm going to get serious here for a second. I, I thought about it. I was like, I could possibly ruin, be the thing that ruins this guy's life right now. But then I remembered those seven people that were killed because that guy was driving under the influence. All yeah. those Marines. I was like, if, if he doesn't ruin his, if his, if his life doesn't get ruined, he might possibly ruin a lot of other people's lives today. And, and you know, I mean, I guess the other way you could look at it is maybe maybe he'd never, ever, ever been in trouble before. And yeah. maybe this was a wake-up call. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I, I somewhat felt bad, but at the same time, it's like he could be driving on the road and kill one of you guys. He could plow into, you know, oh, my sister or my mom people, yeah. or, I mean, or you or me. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I, I just... You. I, I I I thought to myself like what if you go home and see on the news drunk driver kills you know three people two people one person and you see that white explorer like how bad is that gonna feel yeah so I was like yeah gotta be a fucking snitch <laughs> <laughs> all right so <clears throat> Advin Black has hooked us up with a set of bags to raffle off to help us raise money for Project Clean Slate where we get a Harley customize the hell out of it and give it away to a veteran here's the bonus the podcast is a 501c3 nonprofit. therefore you get to write off on uh no i just fucked that up that is. Damn. you get to write off your donation as charitable giving on your taxes so head over to between two wheels.com the two is spelled out t-w-o click on the project clean slate and enter for your chance to win Man, you can tell you've done this podcast stuff for a while. Words are hard. I'm tired. I I am. I tell you what. Four straight weeks of back to back travel. It it's starting to wear on me, and the time zone shifts, and then the fucking 
daylight savings time bullshit. Fuck all this. Oh, yeah, that actually happened that Saturday night when we were there. So oh, yeah. going to bed thinking you're about to get seven hours and you end up getting eight hours. Yeah. Ooh, that, that was, was nice. nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, so this was the first all-bike trip. No follow cars, nothing like that. Yeah. So for me, I don't know if you've ever if you've ever done it, but no, nope. no, it was first your first one. too. Yep. I feel like that's pretty sad no, that we're. No, I take that back. It's not. I, I did go to Galveston for Mardi Gras. That's right. Yeah, you did. But yeah, I felt. Uh, I think that's pretty sad. It took us, well, for me, four years of riding to finally take an all bike trip. It was hmm. easy. It, I think it was. Uh, the only thing that I thought was. Dif- what made it difficult is traveling with a spouse and traveling with an expensive helmet. Okay, it really I, I need to understand yeah, so the expensive helmet piece because I can't, I can't just like lock up my helmet on my handlebars. Oh, oh can. okay. So, so you need GoPro, to have a clear Cardo. or an empty tour pack to be able to lock your stuff. Correct. Okay, I have to okay. have a completely empty tour pack because I also have my wife's helmet with me, and it pretty much that's all it fits is our two helmets. Right. So that was uh, a little bit difficult, uh, but that was only for the long extended stops. Like, you know, and, and I feel like this trip, because there were so many other motorcycles on the road, it makes you more aware because if they take something off your bike, they, they probably use it. Yeah. You know, it's not just some asshole stealing something off your bike. Yeah. Yeah. I, my helmet is, I mean, especially like, it's funny because as the trip goes on more, like I'm more and more scared to lose my helmet because it now has a day's worth of footage on it. Mm-hmm. It's like fuck. Like if I lost my cameras or something like that, that would be pretty pretty terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Not only are you getting stolen from, you're also losing a video. So, uh, but my expectations were pretty spot on. Uh, the cold weather definitely made it a bit more difficult uh, because you had to pretty much pack all your cold gear as well. So. We all know cold gear does not pack down small. That's no, kind no. of the, the whole point. <laughs> the chaps took up a lot more room than I realized. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to try out, finally, I got to try out my Nelson rig luggage. Uh, so I got that trunk bag as well as their tank bag. Uh, the trunk bag is really nice. It's really big, has a lot of uh, storage in it. It's super easy to strap down, way easier than the, uh, the built well bag that I have. I did scratch my bike though. Did you? With that tank bag. Oh. Because I was fucking stupid, and for some reason I just... Grabbed it and yanked it Reached out and yanked it and left a big, nice gouge on it. That I, sucks. I've taken... I've put on and taken off a tank bag I couldn't tell you how many times. And I just... I guess I was tired or in a hurry or something on one of the times I took it off, and I just yanked it. And as soon as I yanked it, I knew what I did. I was like... Fuck why I do that. And I look down, and sure enough, I mean, it's clear as day. Well, now the battle donkey has a cool scar. Yeah, I mean, now I can go back and do my microscope video and be like, this is what a real scratch looks like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember so many people are in the comments like, I've never heard a biker say he wishes he could find more scratches on his bike. <laughs> yeah, there was those people and the people that wanted to see, like, what F11 looked like after yeah. you used it. Yeah, that was, that was the two main comments. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons of the Lone Star Rally. So start with the pros. Uh, pros for me, um, we've kind of already touched on them. There's tons of bikes there. There's, I mean, pretty much everything that you could ever want to see. Mm-hmm. We saw everything from, like, old shovel heads to, of course, the the big, clean, big wheel baggers. Uh, we saw some performance baggers. At a car show. That That is on my list as well, that oh, car yeah, show. Oh, there it is. The, that was probably one of the nicest car shows I've seen in a while yeah. as far as like workmanship and the the upgrades to the cars. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. There was three or four LS swapped classic cars there. And I mean, all of them just done so fucking clean. Yep. Uh, there was also a bunch of rat rods that were super cool there. Um, we already kind of touched on this, the different vendors. It's mm-hmm. not just the same five or six vendors we're used to. I mean, you also in accordance to the vendors is everything was set up very well so like they would set up food in like corners of the thing so it wasn't like everyone was having to funnel into one area yeah. there was there was food and drinks pretty much they did sprinkled have one food throughout. street they had that one that one street was all food and drinks yeah but there was also but food then, at other feeder yeah. streets yeah and the other all these stores that were normally that are there all the time they also got their their beer and wine license 
on yeah. top of that. So you didn't have to go to that one street to get your beer mm-hmm. or anything like that. You can get beer pretty much anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. And they also had the beer booth set up. There was a couple that were set up in that uh, Ciro area that we were in. Yeah. Uh, and I never saw a line. Mm-mm. Hmm. No. Like it wasn't like, you know. I, I stood in, in line th- with one person in front of me when I got my food. Yeah. And when we when we walked up, we walked right up to the counter. And we oh, had our food good. within five minutes. Yeah. Everything was made fresh there. Also, the, the prices, food was great. The prices were yes. really good. And Justin, he, you're the one that brought this up. Yep. Is that this wasn't, it's not a private event. So it's the, all the competition is there. So all the prices were they I mean, have to be competitive. Yeah, yeah. They were, they're all competitive. No, it was still, you know, you're still paying $3 for a bottle of water, $4 for a Coke, $5 for a beer. Yeah. But, I mean. It's not like it's not like going to a basketball game and paying 12 bucks for a beer. <laughs> yeah. For a 12-ounce beer. I mean, yeah. I got a I got a 16-ounce can for $5. Yeah. Okay. We got two-foot-long corn dogs. <laughs> God damn. We got two-foot-long <laughs> corn dogs, uh, a big basket of fries, a unlimited refill lemonade and deep fried Oreos for like 12 bucks. <laughs> I, I did buy a $25 root beer, but it came, it was a, unlimited, it, but it came in a 40 ounce stainless steel insulated mug. So dope. <laughs> I was so jealous of it. <laughs> and nice. then you get unlimited refills for the day. Now the next day you come back, you bring your mug, you pay $5 and you get unlimited refills all day. Yeah. You can make your money on that. I can yeah. drink $25 uh, for the root beer. <laughs> for every sure. every time I walked by, I got a refill because they had regular root beer, diet root beer, cream soda, sweet, they had all the drinks. Yeah. Cool. It was super cool. And I got a cool mug. Uh, we kind of talked about this earlier is the, the price. Mm-hmm. This is one rally you don't have to go and spend hundreds of dollars at. Really just the rally cost us ten dollars. Yeah. For that parking pass. For that and one we day. We didn't necessarily need that. No, we could have attended. Because well your you know, your nephew, they they parked what, three blocks away? Yeah. For free? For free. Yep. Now that's very frowned upon from the locals, but you don't have to pay that ten dollars. But yeah. to me it's like it's ten, fucking ten bucks. Like <laughs> Yeah, and it was thirty bucks for the weekend. Yeah. You know, if you were gonna go every day. For the yeah. entire weekend, it's thirty bucks. So I think that's really cool. I think it definitely changes the atmosphere of the rally too, because we, we said earlier, four hundred to four hundred twenty five thousand, I guarantee you not all those were bikers. There's yeah. people coming in that for the locals well, the that want to check it there. out and you know, regular tourists that just happen to be there at the wrong fucking weekend. <laughs> but you can I mean as opposed to Rot Rally, I mean that kind of goes back to the vendors. They can everyone can come in. Everyone can yeah. come in and spend money and see the culture and see everything. And buy those amazing t shirts. Oh fuck that. That's actually <laughs> No, it's a listen. <laughs> Did I not put it? No, it's oh, down here. Damn it. I don't see it. Oh, it is down there. Oh, okay. there it is. Okay. <laughs> see, I put that on the cons. <laughs> All right. So what about the location? Yeah, it was awesome, man. The I mean, fucking... You're, you're right there on the beach. You're on an island. Yeah, yeah. you're on an island. <laughs> on a, There's a beach there. Now, granted, it was unseasonably cold that day. Yeah. Or that weekend, really. But, I mean... You're on an island. You're, there's a beach. You can go to the beach, and there's plenty of restaurants. And and those who haven't been to, to Galveston, Galveston has a seawall. So, I mean, you can you can drive up right up up against the beach with a awesome view. Yeah, I and mean, you can well, you got to pay to park, I think. Yes. I don't know, but it's you just download the app or something like that. Yeah. And they, have, they got Pleasure Island, or Pleasure Pier. Pleasure Pier. Pleasure yeah. Pier, which is <laughs> a, a mini amusement park. Yeah. And then bubblegum shrimp restaurant there and whatnot. Bunch of cool stuff. I mean, like we said, it's a fucking island. Of course, it's going to be nice. Uh, but going on to the cons, like Ken mentioned, the, the weather was unpredictably or unpredictable weather just in general as far as the time frame that it's in. So for people who aren't local in Texas, you have a few months of the year that are going to roller coaster between 30 degrees and 90 degrees pretty much every other week and you don't know where it's going to fall (laughs) like for example i think i think uh like two days after the rally i think it was back up into the the mid 80s yeah and then i mean you're all you're in you're right on the gulf of mexico yeah so it's almost always warm there by i think tuesday or wednesday they're gonna be back down in the 40s so it's like it's so hard to, to plan events but i i encourage people to plan events during that time because at least it's not like it is cooler August where it's yeah. like guaranteed to be at least ninety five. Yeah, 
on the on the water yeah. all the humidity you can handle oh yeah oh god that'd be terrible yeah uh, another thing we touched on earlier was that it was just fucking loud I mean, with and, the and concerts was, being right down there in all those uh, high-rise buildings, it just echoes everywhere. Off of everything, yeah. Plus, and then you, you know, had the you bikes, the fucking bikes. Everyone, fucking everyone, rev bombing. Yeah, just because, yeah, just because, <laughs> because of who they are. Uh, it was crowded, but that's just that's just part it's of the rallies. It's an event. Yeah. yeah, it's an event. The only thing I don't like is because since they, I mean, we kind of ran into the same thing at Rot, how they have the, the street for bikes and they have like a very narrow bike passageway. Pretty much all the foot traffic has to go on the sidewalks and they're not designed to have that much traffic on them. Right. Uh, tying into that was not enough bike parking. Like we, we kind of touched on that earlier. And you get people <laughs> accusing you of stealing their bike because they blocked you in. Yeah. Uh, even though it was laid out well, I don't believe that there w- there was any signage. So you kind of just had to wander around and find everything. Mm. No, there wasn't. I didn't see any. There wasn't a sign for nothing. <clears throat> yeah. But there there wasn't really like a set location for the rally. It was pretty much all of downtown Galveston, wasn't it? There was areas that were blocked off for it. Mm-hmm. So yes and no. Okay. Uh, they kind of had it broken up in two sections. You had the, the Strand section, which was, of course, the Strand and then the Ciro tents and most of the vendors. But then you also had the Seawall side, which was where all the demo rides and things like that were going on. Okay. So it was kind of split was, up. Yeah, yeah, I wish we could have spent more time over at the, the demo ride area because I heard there was a lot of cool stuff down there as well. Yeah. And then uh, last but definitely not least is uh, Shitty Merch. <laughs> Good it's awesome God. merch. It was what so are you talking about? fucking terrible. The most amazing thing ever. It was definitely boomer designed. So I mean, so, so fucking so mine is bull skulls and oh yeah, any anything that te- you could imagine that you can tie into Texas. Is the, yeah, you <laughs> tie into Texas or motorcycles. So I'm going to tell what I saw that caught my eye, <laughs> and there was tons of this stuff, but it was a, it was a bedazzled bandana that said, "Fuck your tits, show me your clit." Oh yes. And then <laughs> Justin saw a shirt. Yes, I saw the best shirt of the year. It says, I eat more pussy than cervical cancer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's got wow. levels, man. <laughs> like, like you think, oh, yeah, fuck your tits, show me your clit. Oh, okay, yeah. No, that that's <laughs> that one way, takes the cake, way man. over the top there. <laughs> so aggressive. <laughs> like uh, cervical cancer. Yeah. <laughs> And I saw one that was definitely the most, well, I wouldn't say most. It was one of the more mild ones, but I just, I thought it can so much. It said, fuck you, you fucking fuck. <laughs> it's all, I mean, from from neckline down to the, the belt, it's all said, fuck you, you fucking fuck. Oh, yeah. And everything in between. You know, all your, they had all the Trump shit all over the place. Oh, yeah. They fucking had, all, you know, all anything sorts of, you can just imagine. anything. But the actual LSR Brandon merch was fucking garbage. <laughs> It was, I mean, yeah. literally, imagine any Harley Davidson T-shirt ten years ago. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we're like we were like, oh, we should get a sticker, and the sticker was just they were this fucking big. So for people listening, like what twelve by four? Yeah, <laughs> like, damn near the fucking size of a sheet of paper. Like, that's how big they were. I was like, I and it was so cluttered the... with shit. Yeah, you on couldn't it. see anything. Like you really had to look to see what the fuck does that say? <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Yeah. To wrap up this episode, let's go into the closing argument. Would you go back to the Lone Star Rally? Yep. I would. I would. Especially because it's not that expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's in, a, it's in a great location. You're, you're on Galveston Island. So there's, there's, so there's stuff to do outside yeah. mm-hmm. of the – and that's year-round. I mean, Pleasure Pier is open year-round. They also have a dope-ass railroad museum if you're into that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. so there, there's plenty of stuff to do there. And you don't have to stay in Galveston. We actually stayed in Jamaica Beach. It was actually – it actually was classified as Galveston because Jamaica Beach is surrounded. So we had to pass through Jamaica Beach oh, okay. into Galveston. But and I guess Jamaica Beach is uh, hard on the cops there. Oh Jesus Christ! They, uh, they, they they definitely like to stop you. <laughs> oh yeah, but but yeah, but no, I would I, definitely go back. Yeah, I'd go again. Maybe you can uh, trailer your bike there next year. Yeah, no, it's still too. it's still within the state of Texas. So. <laughs> yeah, but you have to leave the mainland though. Yeah, no, I don't feel like you can do it. <laughs> it's still Texas. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll have to, we'll have to make sure to get you a very loud stereo. Uh, the only downside that I could see and we were lucky because your parents had their resort mm-hmm. is faith and I were actually going to go 
ourselves. But even three months out, all the hotels were all like 200 bucks a night. Oh, yeah. And yeah, that was on the cheap it. end, yeah. I did overhear some people talking, though, and they said that with all those vacation rentals and stuff like that, like if you can get a good group of people like we did in Arkansas, you can get it for dirt cheap. Yeah. I think I mean, he that, said he ended up spending like 45 bucks for four nights. And that's what we were going to try to do, but Brad and Hosso and them couldn't go. Yeah. So, but yeah, right. absolutely. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I be dead, dude. I like, I like to ask for